to back off this thing a little bit. We'll go ahead and get started tonight with prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful still for the beautiful fall harvest weather that you're giving us. Yes. Lord, and we, and Lord, we just implore you to please make all of us mindful that we are in such a blessed state compared to so many others around the world. Lord, have us concentrate not on what we have and not on our abilities that would help others to have physical needs, but Lord, the time of harvest now is for the souls. And for those souls to be harvested, Lord, they have to have the word. And Lord, let us use our resources wisely that we're not so much worried about trying to meet people's physical needs as we are meeting their spiritual needs. And Lord, that we have opportunities to participate and to help get that done around the world. So Lord, make us mindful of that. Help us to focus on it and help us to use our resources for the harvest that is truly the most important harvest of our time. And that is for the souls of the people that you wish to be part of your kingdom. We ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, show of hands. How many all excited about the election that took place? Yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, we did not get what we wanted. If the one thing that comes out of this is that, you, and you, those of you that were with me in the Bible study previously know that I always said I don't, I don't pay attention to the polls. And if, after this going going on is if you're paying attention to any polls that's being put out you, there's there's something wrong there's they absolutely have no bearing whatsoever they have no idea they have no system of accurately polling people and telling you what they're what's going to happen um, and I got caught up in it a little bit this time and I think the reason was that I was so anxious for uh, the conservative Christian to stand up this time and vote. And they didn't do it. It has not been done. And we're to blame for that. Uh, the Christian community in this country is, is, should just be slapped upside the head uh, to allow what happened has happened. Uh, what you can take out of it, like I said, is not to follow poll wars watchers in the future. Uh, the sad thing is that abortion rights did make gains, made significant gains you may not be aware of. Several states voted abortion into their state constitution. And one of them is our neighbor to the north. Michigan is now a constitutional right to an abortion, to kill a baby. I think New Hampshire was the other one on the East Coast. Uh, but on top of that, there were other states in Kentucky, our neighbor to the south. They voted in some additional uh, abortion rights to make it easier for people to get get abortions, and rather than restricting them. And you know, it, it's just it's just so sad. Um, it makes us weaker than what we are right now. This election does. Uh, and that's such a dangerous thing because, uh, and I'll pass on to you in a few minutes some of the other stuff that's on other parts of the world. But um, what you can expect would be, is now going to be total gridlock. Uh, the Republicans, looks like it's going to control the House. They will spend their time uh, doing investigations and trying to impeach Biden and they'll spend all this time and money and it will go absolutely nowhere. For one thing, what's used in impeaching? It, ta it takes Senate to put any punishment to it. That's not gonna happen. They've gotta have the majority, they gotta have 60 votes in the Senate, it's not gonna happen. It's impossibility. So it's just, you know, and we're not even gonna know who really controls the Senate, it doesn't look like until the second week of December. Uh, they've gotta have a runoff in Georgia. Warnock and um, what's his name? The, Herschel. Yeah, Herschel Walker. Uh, they've got to have a runoff. 
according to state law. Same thing we had in 2020. It's happening all over again. Uh, Georgia, same place in Georgia. So it's not a pretty picture. Uh, no sense spending a lot of time on it. Um, what I would like for you to do would be, if you'll turn with me to uh, Hebrews 10.24. Here's what you should be focusing on, in my opinion. Um, Hebrews 10, verse 24. And it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Yes. And that's what we need to be focused on. And just like I was mentioning in my prayer, we need to be focusing not on physical needs. Physical needs are important and they're gonna become more important to a lot of people as this thing unwinds. Uh, you're starting to see some of the media outlets now talk about the worldwide economic problems, something they hadn't covered before. And, you, you know, we've talked about it here, it's for real. Uh, the economies around the world are in sad shape and there's, it's going to be an unwinding. But as we talked about before, in order for a great reset to happen, and that great reset thing is not something come from the Christians, that's something come out of the World Forum, World Economic Forum, that's talked about or sponsored by the UN. And the great reset is they want to reset the economies. Well, the only way to do that is for all the economies in the world to fail. Right. All the important ones, the large ones, those systems have to fail so they can reset them in the way that they want them done. That's why it's called a great reset. And it's, it's coming, it's coming around the corner, it appears. I mean, the, ec the economic data around the world is terrible. And it's just, you know, it's just going to unwind. So we need to be focusing here, there again, I'll read 24 again. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Amen. And those good works need to be of a spiritual nature. It's, just, it's, it's what bishops involved in. And, if, and what they're doing, you know, in Bishop's case of where is he was telling us here uh, when he was highlighting his trip. Uh, they are preparing, especially in Armenia along the border with Iran, they are preparing people to go into Iran when the time is right. And the time is going to be right because we're seeing the revolution starting to take place. Did any of you see a videotape this last week in Iran? You, you want to see where the protests are at now? Young people, this is young people, teenagers, young 20s. They're walking down the streets and they're walking up beside someone wearing a turban. Pop! Smacking a turban off his head. Not physically hurting him, just knocking. I, I've seen there several videotapes. This is happening all over the country. That tells you what the people, have, you know, the frustration that the people have. And especially, like I've told you before and before, it's the younger people that's driving this thing. They've had that's enough. Right. And these are the people that Bishop's been working with and helping to go in to set the stage for these young people to be brought to Jesus. Those are the type of things we need to be involved in. That's the works we need to do. It's not, not trying to come out here and trying to feed the world, the people that's, that's starving. That's going to happen. And the fact of the matter is, we've been trying to do some of that for years. It's like you've heard the pastor talk about. So much of that stuff ends up on the black market. You can ship all this stuff you want to, to to some of the Eastern African countries and some of the West African countries. People are starving. Food doesn't get to them. Never makes it. Because off the ship, into the hands of the terrorists that's, that's the, the strong armin that's in the country, and they're making the money off of it. They're selling it. Or they're using it to feed their, their people they have in their small armies. So what are we doing? We can, you know, we can all get a big rally and raise a bunch of money and load a ship up and send stuff. Basically has no impact. But the thing of it is that we're talking about the harvest that we're in of souls, we can have an impact Amen. Yes, by supporting those that are in the front lines, creating things to get the word out. So that's my point for tonight.
Talking about making us weaker, let's talk about China right quick. Uh, Xiping officially, this is an official thing, says that China is preparing for war. That came out this week. He was speaking at a military consortium where this is, of course, you know, he just got reelected and we talk about he's in total control now. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. He's got all these underlings with him. He called all of his military heads in and they had an official high level military meeting and he told them to his face, you guys have to prepare for war. And they've been telling their people to prepare for war for the last year and a half. And as I mentioned last week in his acceptance speech when they made him leader again, he was talking about, hey, there's there's big storms ahead, folks. It's, you know, we've got to get prepared. So the problem is with this election that's under our belt now, we didn't come out of it stronger. Now we're going to have more gridlock and it gives opportunities to countries like China now to do whatever they want to, they think they need to do. And they knowing that we're not strong enough to respond to them as we would have been in the past. That's the danger Thank that we have. That's when the danger I was talking about before. On. Okay, okay. Uh, in China, the things that are going on there a little bit more, their import and export markets have had a huge drop this last uh, eight weeks. Mostly due to the right. fact that they keep locking down their factories and cities due to COVID. But it seems like the, the bell's finally gone on in their head a little bit and they're starting to talk about relaxing the COVID restrictions because they're, they're ruining their country with this stuff. And, uh, but that's, that's one of the big reasons for the drop. The other thing is that other economies around the world are starting to falter, so they're not buying as much. Inflation's rising around in almost all the major countries in the world. People can't buy as much, so it's just supply and demand. And China, of course, is the largest exporter in the world of product, and it's starting to have an impact on them. The interesting thing is, if you watch, is how rapidly China is replacing the United States in the Mideast and in the Asian peninsulas. Um, Saudi Arabia, and uh, Xi Jinping's going to visit Saudi Arabia. Uh, UAE met with them last week. And they come out of these things talking about how they're firming up their relationships. So China's making hay, and it's all come about since our debacle in Afghanistan. Uh, we proved in Afghanistan, yeah, we'll walk away and leave everybody, including our own people. You know, did anybody see the, the uh, Taliban parade? They had a Taliban parade in Afghanistan entirely almost of our weapons that we left, including helicopters. They had attack helicopters flying over top, U.S. made. They had American tanks, APCs, uh, personnel carriers, everything. We walked away and left all that stuff over there. And they had a nice parade with it here just the other day, showing off their military hardware now. So China, China's going to move. Uh, they're just, how, how, can you not, how can you not take these major leaders at face value? If Xi Jinping stands up and says, we're going to do this, you probably ought to believe he's going to do it. We're seeing the same thing in Iran that's come across. Death to America and death to Israel. Why do you not understand that these people really mean that? that the American people are just, it's just unbelievable how gullible they are and how they overlook this stuff. It just, Bishop and I was talking about it before tonight. I just don't, I don't understand. I really don't. How they can, how they can whitewash this stuff and not, not think about it. Um, in the Mideast, I talked about the Iran problem. The other thing is Iran, this is a good one. Iran asked Russia for help developing their nuclear program, which by the way, Iran swears they don't have a new program. That's what they've said the whole time through all these negotiations, look it up. They say all the time, we don't have a new program. They, they've been saying that ever since it started, but yet this week they asked Russia to come and help them with their new program. Public announcement on that. Um, 
The other thing in the Mideast right now, Israel found more natural gas. Did you pick up on that one? That gas field that's off the coast of Israel and Lebanon that we talked about, you know, they did a maritime agreement here, sharing the proceeds with uh, uh, Lebanon on that. Um, that they, they, at one time they said there was this huge field when they did the initial research and exploration and then they kind of lowered it by about 20%, saying, well, it's about 20% smaller than we thought. But now they found another field adjacent to this one that's bigger yet than the first one they found. And at the same time, they said they've got to firm the data up, but it looks like the field that they thought was 20% smaller isn't. It's bigger than what they anticipated. Because this, re, you know, once they found the gas out there, it's just really spurred them to start looking, you know, doing the exploration. But Israel is sitting on way, way more gas than they even thought. They're probably the largest gas supply in the world by far. Re gas resource. They're not supplying it yet, but they're working on doing it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's uh, let's skip up country. Look at Ukraine for a few minutes. Th this thing's drug on long enough, and here again, and I, you know, you believe you can believe what you want to believe. Um, I don't. I don't think Ukraine has any chance of winning this against Russia. I said that from the beginning, and I still believe it. I don't care that Ukraine's made some pushback and counteroffensive. Uh, they've done it because we have propped them up mainly along with the other European countries, but it's been mainly us. Would not be surprised to see between now and the first of the year before the new Congress takes place, they're going to push through another $500 billion package for them, money that we don't have. Uh, what's happening in Europe is all the EU countries have been, of course, been told or asked to ante up to help supply Ukraine with weapons to fight against Russia. And uh, they're starting to get some pushback now. There have been some protests, major protests in Italy. People there are saying, hey, look, our price of gas, our price of food, everything's gone through the ceiling, and you're still wanting us to give more money to Ukraine, and they've had enough of it. You're going to probably, and France has had a little bit of that. You're probably going to see a lot more. I think from what I'm reading, you're going to start seeing some major anti-war protests in European countries. And the reason I talk about Russia, that Ukraine's not going to win this, the big deal was, well, look at all the Russian tanks that they, they destroyed and all the vehicles and all the airplanes. The only thing is, that was all World War II stuff. Russia has not deployed, to my knowledge, they've not employed, deployed any of their good frontline stuff in this war yet. Now they're getting ready to. All they're waiting on now is ground freeze up. That's why Putin had that draft of 300,000, and it looks like he's going to add another 100 to 200,000 people to that. And they are moving their frontline equipment to, towards the front line. And they're waiting on the ground to freeze to start using this stuff. During the, it'll be a winter battle. But uh, I, I just personally, on what I know about it, which I'm no expert, I'll guarantee you that, but uh, what I know and see about it, there's no way Ukraine can outlast Russia on this deal. The other thing is that they're getting ready to vote Finland and Sweden into NATO. That's a big deal. Why? Who does Finland border with? Russia. On their eastern border between, on Russia's western border is Finland. So that puts another NATO country right on their border. And that's where this whole thing, you go back to it, that was the main reason Russia, one of the main reasons Russia started this thing was because, you can't blame Putin totally. We, we set the stage for all this. Back in the original NATO agreement, we agreed we would not have NATO countries on the border with Russia. That was part of the agreement. We have broken that, and we're getting ready to break it some more. And it's just, um, you know, Ukraine now is asking for peace talks with Russia. 
but that's purely propped up by the United States pushing them. It got leaked, a text got leaked where they're pushing Ukraine to say that because they want the United States people to ante up another $500 million under the, prep, under the proposition that, well, they're getting ready to talk about peace now. We need to show force. It, it's all a contrived thing. A um, couple of side notes that's happening around with this. The U.S. and Britain voted against a re UN resolution that was an anti-Nazi resolution. Now stop and think about that. UN was brought up in a resolution condemning Nazism and the United States voted it down along with Britain. Why? Because one of the things, reason Putin went into Ukraine was because there is a, a battalion the Ukrainian battalion that's called Azov, and are pretty fierce fighters. They're also totally Nazis, carry over from World War II, never went away in that part of the world. They are Nazis. They will stand and tell you, we are Nazis. Since 2014, this Azov battalion has killed approximately 150,000 Russians inside Ukraine, in that southeast corner. That was one of the reasons Putin went ahead. If you remember back and you look back this spring, he made the comments, we're going in to save the Russian people in Ukraine. And that's the reason, because the Azov Battalion has been killing them. So, you know, that was the reason the EU and Britain voted down. They don't want that to muddy the water up right now. That's the reasoning behind it. A big thing that's come out here in the last couple of weeks is how much spying there is on the phones in Europe. And the same thing here. You may not be aware of it, but we float, it's, it's a kind of a balloon, and we float them at 80,000, 90,000 feet, and they basically hang up there, and those things are recording. They, they have ability to record all, all data forms. And what they've been doing in Europe, they have, we have them here. I can show you on a computer. You can pull up on the computer and see exactly where it's at because it's part of the um, ADBS exchange system to where that new system they put in place to help airliners and airplanes not run into each other. You can actually pull that up online and see where it's at, tell you the altitude, tell you the exact coordinates of that. You can look at it every day. They're up there every day. They do these things in Europe. And they've been recording telephone calls, especially on European leaders, their military leaders and the political leaders, and that's being leaked out now. So that's, that stuff's gonna really raise some eyebrows. Um, the other one, one more little side note there in Ukraine, it looks like we talked about the circumstantial evidence that uh, uh, the United States had something to do with blowing up that gas line. Well, it looks like they did, and it looks like it was a combined operation between the United States and Britain. And one, they, if you go back again, they've got radar data showing um, ships that were deployed in that area at that time, and there's actually was a flight of helicopters that more than likely, th th this is conspiracy theory, I'll tell you that. But it's not conspiracy theory that there was a flight of helicopters that flew down through the type that would drop commandos and they were right over top of the flight uh, over that pipeline just before this occurred. That's, that's true. Um, the other thing is that there was a text part of this telephone stuff that's being recorded. It came from, um, I gotta make sure I get this right. It came from the British Prime Minister, which was the lady that just resigned before she was Prime Minister, but she, she was the director of I forget what thing. But she sent it to Blinken, who's our Secretary of State, and the comment was this. It was a, just a message. Everything is done. And it happened at the same time frame all this other stuff went on. So just more circumstantial evidence. There's, you know, it's conspiracy theory. Real quick, I got five minutes. 
I'll run through these. This is kind of miscellaneous stuff tonight. Did you hear about the Boston University lab playing with COVID? Oh yeah, they created a new COVID line. Now can stop and think about what we've just gone through. And we have a university here in the United States in Boston that's now created, a, created their own mutated COVID and it has an 80% kill rate. Why? And you funded it. The taxpayer dollars funded it. This is true. This is not, this is not makeup stuff. They, they, you know, they're, there's, of course, they're quote unquote, they're looking at that, trying to determine. But yeah, why would a university in this country, after what we just went through, take COVID and make it more potent? It just, it's just amazing. Um, of course, we've got the uh, big climate thing going on, number 27, big climate meeting. Our illustrious president will be flying up there, I think, tomorrow. Uh, I think, where is it at? In Egypt, I believe. It's in, it's in the Middle East or Asia. Um, the UN this week calls for a world tax to pay retribution on climate damage. They want the countries of the world to come up with $2 trillion per year to give to the countries that are being destroyed by climate change. The Pope got up Tuesday and he warns that there are serious humanitarian impacts if we don't act on climate change right now. Okay. Um, I watched a program the other night about an hour and a half long. It's from a scientific group that's totally respected. They had all their facts and figures and they proved there is no increase in climate damage in the world today. It's no different than it's ever been. They proved that the only thing that's going on is that you're being reported on more. It was a very, very interesting program. And this, these people had all their data and they, they'd spent a long time putting this together. And uh, there's, no, there's no climate change out of the ordinary. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna see climate change here in the next couple of weeks. You're gonna freeze your rear ends off. You're gonna be cold next Sunday coming to church, I'll guarantee you, because you're not ready for 25 degree weather. And that's what you're gonna get this weekend. There's places in the Midwest this week that's going to have 60 below zero chill factor before it's over. There's going to be a lot of wind with this stuff. And they're, right now, they're pretty firm on the forecast. It's going to last until the middle of December, this cold snap is. But the thing of it is, the droughts are not new. Cold cycles are not new. Heat cycles are not new. And these people had all the data in the world to verify what they were talking about. And they challenged anybody to pick their data apart, but it's not being reported on. The, with that, I, I wanna jump real, real quick here to um, uh, Job chapter 38 and read you just a little short skip we all know Job's, the Job story. This is, um, and one thing, you know, we've talked about this before, but I'll remind people, when you're reading the Bible, when you come to chapters, you like to go from chapter one to chapter two, whatever, those don't exist in the real Bible. When the real Bible was written in scrolls and you roll the scroll out, there aren't chapters. It just, it's the narrative goes on, okay? So be careful sometimes. The, the chapters were inputted back, I don't know, Bishop, do you know what the time frame was when they started putting chapters in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Sometime after the Gutenberg Press, I know that. But anyhow, they were made for ease of reading. And sometimes if you're not careful, if you're reading, studying your Bible and you stop at a chapter and say, well, I'm gonna pick this chapter up at another time, you can really miss some context by not going ahead and reading what's after that. Or if you start on chapter, like chapter three, 
maybe go back to two and see, okay, what's the context, what's going on, because those, those uh, chapters weren't there originally. But let's go to, to uh, 38, and this is when uh, Elihu was in a conversation with Job, explaining to Job, hey, look, you, you know, God's, got, God's in control of all this stuff and everything, but I just really like, like this part here. It says, starting with verse 3, it says, Brace yourself like a man because I have some questions for you and you must answer them. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determines dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations? Who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels, angels shouted for joy? Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst from the womb? As I clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness, for I locked it behind barred gates limiting its shore. It goes on and on, and the point is this. Does the climate change? Yeah, just about every day. Some place in the world changes more, sometimes it's less, depending on where you are. In Indiana, the old saying was, you know, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute, it's going to change. And that's very true. But who's controlling it? That's the question. Who's in control of this? And it, it's no different than when they were back here in Job. That's what this, this whole part here is. You know, t tell me if you know so much. And that, that's where we're at today with these scientists warning about all this uh, global warming and global change, weather change and everything. Same situation. And the big thing is you go back through the ice cores that they've been drilling for years. You go back in the studies they do on the rings and trees. It goes on and on and on. There is so much, there's a lot of sediment analysis. This stuff's not new. It's going on ever since God created it in the first place. And that's, people lose sight of that. But now, see, it's all a man thing. Man can control it. We've, we've messed it up. We've got to fix it. So don't get caught up in that. Just, just stay away from it. Thanks for your time tonight. Bishop, it's all yours, buddy. Praise the Lord.